I just can't quit McCall's 8020. <laughs> As you guys know, this is the same pattern that I used for my National Sewing Month Sew Along. And since that Sew Along wrapped just a couple of weeks ago, I've already done one bonus video where I showed you how to alter the front bodice piece to raise the neckline. Well, I'm back with another bonus video where I show you how that neckline adjustment looks when you sew it up. You'll also notice that I sewed this version with the slim sleeve and the sleeve flounce. I'll have yet another bonus video with a tutorial on how to sew up this sleeve as well, so stay tuned for that. But today I want to talk about the second version that I made of this pattern. First things first, I obviously made the neckline adjustment just like I showed you guys before. To sew it up, I marked 5 8 inch at the top and bottom of the center front seam and only sewed between those two markings, leaving the seam allowances free above and below. Remember too, when I made the neckline alteration, I also increased the neckline seam allowance from 3 8 to 5 8 So make sure to pay attention to whatever you do in that alteration and then apply it to this step. Leaving the seam allowances free uh, makes it so much easier to get a clean finish when you attach the elastic to the neckline, aka finishing the neckline, and attaching the lower front to the bottom. From there, I sewed the elastic to the neckline just like I showed you in the original sew along, except I shortened my elastic to accommodate for the higher neckline. The higher neckline will produce a shorter neckline, so just measure along the seam line of your new neckline. I ended up cutting elastic to be the exact same length as that, and then just gently pulled it, similar to how I did in the original sew along, all around the neckline, and then cut off uh, any excess. I really only had like not very much excess at the end at all. But I think the finished result of this higher neckline is so pretty and definitely more modest. <laughs> I might tweak the next one because, you know, there will be a next one. Ever so slightly removing a smidge from the high point shoulder, just getting a little bit of a tighter fit on the front neckline. But other than that, the alteration really worked perfectly. And I hope all of you that were... Um, hesitant to make this pattern with me before because of the low neckline will reconsider now. The sleeve is also a great addition. I absolutely love the flutter sleeve on my original version, but it's really hard to wear jackets and cardigans over a full sleeve. So that version is really just a warm weather wear. But the slim sleeve is perfect for the colder months. Basically, you need two or more versions just like me. The sleeve is drafted really well. It's slim without being too tight or constricting, and it's also not baggy. So it fits the way that it was intended, and you don't always find that in sleeve patterns. So I did not have to make any alterations to the width of the sleeve at all, like a full bicep adjustment. I didn't have to do that. The sleeve head fits into the bodice nicely for a knit garment, and of course I had to add the sleeve flounce. It's just a fun frilly detail that I have a hard time resisting. If I were going to wear a jacket or cardigan over this one, I would just scrunch up the sleeve of the outerwear so that it hits right above where the flounce begins and then the flounce will peek out the bottom. But again, with the fuller um, flounce, it would look a little bit bumpy and lumpy underneath a coat. So just keep that in mind, um, depending on when you're gonna wear it, where you're gonna wear it, how you're gonna wear it, um, keep in mind some styling options there. If I had omitted the flounce, I might narrow the sleeve ever so slightly at the hem just so it's a little, uh, more close fitting. As it stands right now, I have like, I don't know, maybe an inch, inch and a half of wearing ease. I think when you have the flounce, you really need that extra wearing ease. But if you did not have it, you would, you would probably want it to be a little bit closer fitting. 
I also want to mention, since we talked so much about it in the original sew along, the areas of this second garment where I used the Eloflex stretch thread by Coates and Clark, uh, namely on the under bust horizontal seam that you have there uh, in the shoulders is a great place to put it and in the sleeve head. But I also added it to the seam where I attached the flounce to the sleeve. This is a seam where you want the uh, garment to stretch with you and that's what the Eloflex allows it to do. So having that in there gives that seam a little bit more movement, making it a lot more comfortable. Anything that's relatively close fitting, especially on a horizontal seam, you wanna be sure to use the Eloflex in those seams. The only thing that I don't love about the flounce on my version is that the wrong side shows and the wrong side of my fabric is starkly different than the right side. It's very noticeable when it flips up. So I might reconsider this choice depending on your fabric if that is going to bother you. My fabric is another double brushed poly, the same type of fabric I used for my first version because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? This particular one came from Cali Fabrics a few years ago and is no longer available, but there are tons of really pretty double brushed polys out there. I know you'll find one that you love. I've linked some in the description box for you, so be sure to check that out if you need to go shopping. But that's gonna do it for me today. Stay tuned for the Slim Sleeve tutorial coming at you very soon. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.